Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Taste the Cold Healing Bench episode. Uh, today on the Healing Bench we have these two LED lamps that fell on me. I was using this for, I don't know, about a year and a half before they fell. And what's interesting about them is that although that they are both the same brand and the same type of light, they both failed differently. Uh, one of them, I think it was uh, this one, it failed completely, so there was no signs of life on it. Um, both of the lamps are DL lamp, 15 watts, and the other one, actually, sorry, um, this one was kind of semi-failed, and will turn on periodically from time to time, while this one just didn't uh, didn't work at all and just opening the case I immediately noticed that there is an LED that's that's burnt so theoretically the driver should be good on this one and we'll see if maybe we can combine both and at least fix one of them um, you could go the route that you can try and change the LED but you will need uh, an LED from the same type of lamp because uh, to achieve 15 watts uh, this must be multiple cheap LEDs there are a total of 16 uh, 8 on each side that are all connected in, in series as you can see here on on the board one of the wire comes here goes through the LED and then through this zero ohms resistor which I think they used as a as a fuse and then goes uh, to the LED on, on the side and jumps through each of those in series so you see here is the, the little jumpers that are in between each of the LEDs so my goal for today is to try and open this up um, see what the driver chip inside is and see if we can maybe um, fix one or possibly both we'll see um, the tricky part here will be uh, this silicon that they've glued this top board on and that's used to improve the heat dissipation of the lamp and we also had the caps that were also glued but if i manage to fix a small dab of CA glue will fix that and we'll have the diffuser back on. What we see here where just a single LED from the entire lamp failed is so typical that, you know, it's almost uh, a waste where everything else is good on this lamp except for that single LED. And because everything is in series, nothing, nothing works because that LED went open circuit um, depending on the circuit inside an easy fix might be that uh, we just jump over this LED and hopefully the chip inside uh, if it works on a constant current mode detects that there is a different voltage here and um, still runs the LEDs through the same uh, through the same current but We'll see once we open it up.
Okay, so here we have the circuit out. Um, these two screws only hold this module to this aluminum heatsink that then transfer all the heat to, to the aluminum that's on the side on the bulb. And there are two wires that go down to this PCB. On the PCB, we have a resistor that comes directly from one of the uh, inputs on the bulb and goes through a bridge rectifier. There is a smoothing capacitor. Um, so it's 4.7 microfarads, 400 volts. And there is a position for a, a inductor and another capacitor, but they, the inductor is just bridged with a zero ohm resistor. Goes to the transformer, then it's then controlled by this chip. And the number of that is MC5833B. And it's probably a dedicated chip that uh, controls LED. There is a diode, few resistors here and a capacitor probably to determine and define this, uh, the current that um, the LEDs will receive. And there is a resistor on the end and this is another smoothing capacitor that's on the output of that. And that's also, that's 2.2 microfarads, also full of 400 volts. So uh, using that high of a voltage for a capacitor indicates that there will be quite high voltage across all of these LEDs. And probably since they are using LEDs that uh, have multiple chips, each of this LED probably turns on at uh, more than just three volts. And I tried that with, uh, with a small battery, tried to connect across the contacts and none of that, them lit. So for this one, um, we'll see, probably the driver chip is still good. I'll go and open up this other one and we'll see if we can see any, any problems inside. Both of the capacitor here look okay. I don't see anything obvious. And once I have the other one open, we'll see in, if we can inspect this more. So this one is uh, the one that had no visible damage on the LEDs on front. Let's see the condition of the board. So far, nothing really obvious. Okay, so here we have the meter on continuity. And the first things that I'm gonna check are these zero ohm resistors. Okay, this is a good one. And this one is not. No, I wasn't getting a good connection. So both of these are okay. There is one down here. Yeah, that's a good one as well. And there is one over here. That's fine. So next up is this resistor at the input. And that one is fine as well. So let's see what else can we check. Sorry, that was out of frame. So that's, as you can see, also good. Mm, so what else can we check? Okay, so I probed around and I wasn't able to find any obvious faults. I checked all the resistors, checked the diode, everything seems fine. Uh, there seems to be like a loose solder joint there on the chip. 
and that might be the issue but before going any further i wanted to just uh, connect it and see and possibly test the output voltage here because even though it doesn't look like so they, there might be a diode that uh, uh, an led here at the output that uh, has gone wrong similar to this one that burnt but it doesn't show any marks so i'll connect it and see if i get any any voltage on the output here um, let me see what's the best way to test that without actually shorting anything currently this is not connected and i'm gonna plug it right now and now it works okay so that means that somehow we managed to fix it well not necessarily but either what i suspect here at the chip there's a loose connection that i now um, connected or some of the connections that were on the outside um, were having issues because as i said at the beginning this one is the lamp that was periodically turning off and on i might try and run it here and see uh, but before doing that i'll connect the other one and we'll try to measure the output on that one Okay, here it goes. And this one doesn't do anything when I connect it. I have the meter on 250 volts DC. And we get 300 on the output. That means that that... Uh, that means that that board outputs uh, works correctly and it's the LED that's the problem. Okay, so before calling off this video finally, I've added some solar flux to the pins that I thought that they are, might be not connected. Pins that I think are the problem ones are these two at the end and maybe this one here uh, I'm not sure how much you can see but there seems to be a gap between the solder and uh, the actual pins so I've added some flux there and I'll just Gently try to reflow that. okay so it might not be the prettiest job but that seems a lot better now than it was before and we'll see if that's the problem i'll keep it running for a while and i'll let you know so the light here is running for almost an hour now and there was no flicker uh, it seems to be running fine so I would call that a success although I'm not sure that I'm actually gonna return the lamp 
inside the original holder. I might keep to the module and the panel as is to be used in some future projects. So be sure to subscribe to my channel to be able to see that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.